Well, good morning, folks, and welcome back to Fly Fishing with Jeff.com. And also, uh, <clears throat> welcome to 2020. It is March 14th, Saturday, and I'm here at Bennett Springs State Park, just uh, west of Lebanon, Missouri. One of my favorite places. <clears throat> to fish and uh, well it was uh, an exciting last few months if you followed along at my website flyfishingwithjeff.com then you know that I had a little accident back in October uh, broke my leg <clears throat> a couple places and uh, but I'm back and put together and doctors did a great job and i am been back at it a couple months now but this is really the first uh, fishing that I've gotten done this year so <clears throat> I've done a lot of videos here from Bennett so you can watch some of the others if you need some background information but Bennett is one of the four trout parks here in the state of Missouri and <clears throat> I know as soon as some people hear trout parks they really start to think about cans of corn and stuff of that nature <clears throat> but that's just not the case and it's just such a beautiful place. Uh, it is kind of rough this morning. It's 36 degrees. It's rained most of the night. So the water is up. And uh, supposed to be more rain coming in. So we're, we're going to give it a try for a little while and see what we can find. But I'm glad to have you back. And more importantly, I'm glad to be back here uh, upright and fishing and in the year 2020. And got all kinds of exciting things coming up this year so subscribe and stay with me and follow my website and uh, again like always if you have questions don't be don't be afraid to ask I I try to do my best to answer those efficiently and honestly and uh, <clears throat> we'll continue to try to do that for you so um, shoot me an email once in a while and hit the like button and all those kinds of things so Come along these next couple of days and let's see if we can find some fish here in the area to catch and uh, we'll go from there. So he's not a giant, but he is a fish. And away you go. Alright, well let me tell you a little bit <clears throat> about my rig. I've got, I always get lots of questions. Uh, this is my six weight St. Croix bank robber rod and I've got a uh, <clears throat> six weight line, a sink tip Rio. It's a sink tip one. And um, just got a new crosswater Reddington reel. And I really like these large arbor reels. This is a 789. And um, they're not expensive and they really do a good job. Got my tippet all the way down to 3x. Water stained. I might have to go to 4 if it were clear. And uh, then I've got one of my cream colored trout candies. And um, it seems to be doing the job 
did, did yesterday, had a good uh, last hour or so, and so we're, we're just doing some simple stuff here. We're water loading our cast, and we're making long casts over into the shore, <clears throat> letting the fly swing. Uh, make sure you keep your rod tip down in the a connection point to you and the fish and varying the retrieve from slow to fast to um, even caught a couple this morning on kind of a very spastic um, retrieve. The other thing you need to try to do is to go ahead and cast up into the current and I like to then allow the fly to swing down through so that it's going downstream into these pods of fish. <clears throat> and then just have to be alert, be ready, uh, be ready for a, a strip set when you feel the tug. And you know, that's just something that's going to take some time. It takes, in fact, a lot of time. I think it's the one area that gives people a lot of trouble is being comfortable with the strip set and not lifting your rod. So let's see what we can find right here. Anyway, the sun's starting to bust through a little bit and it uh, always feel, feels a lot better when there's just a tad bit of sun to warm up the morning. There you go. Easy now. A beautiful day. Beautiful place. Love it out here. Well, it's our uh, third day here at Bennett, and it's a Monday. <clears throat> and I know spring is going to arrive this week, but always like listening to and you can see one right there and one right there the <clears throat> male cardinals are always the harbingers of spring and there they sit <clears throat> trying to figure out where their 
territory is going to be. There's something about that that's just a beautiful sound. <clears throat> I always enjoy listening to that. When I'm in the woods turkey hunting as the early morning light starts to come up and first get the whippoorwills and then you get the cardinals and crows, geese, and hopefully a tom turkey or two mixed in. But we've had <clears throat> more rain than we can handle here in Bennett. In fact, it's just been ongoing, and I think tomorrow may be the first dry day we have, and with more to come the next couple of days after that. So it's uh, it's a tough go right now, and uh, just changes everything. Have to fish it a little differently, but uh, <clears throat> sure am glad to be up and able to be up and moving around and fishing this morning. So come along and let's see what we can find. See if we might find a, an old lunker or two out here this morning. <clears throat> Particularly like there's another male cardinal right there getting ready to do his thing, but I, even in the winter you get the cedars and the sycamores and the collar variation. It doesn't have to be spring or fall to be beautiful. here got us a little bass <clears throat> there you go folks on his way to 10 pounds So I've switched back to a trout candy. This is a size six. It's got a little weight on it. Tan or cream, whichever one you want to call it. Shows up a little better in this darker water. And I snagged my other cream colored woolly booger on a limb, overhanging limb back there. And so I don't have it anymore, but uh, I think they like this trout candy in here. So what I've got right here, and you can't really see on the camera, is there's some grass runs right down here and then between the grass and the bank there's a, oh, a 10 or 15, 10 foot berm. And they like to lay in that grass. That gives them some cover, gets them out of the current. And so I'm pulling that trout candy kind of down. Ah, oh, right there was another one. Through that grass. 
and alongside the grass where they're holed up. And that's really the key to this, is finding that little, those little pockets of cover. Ah. Just missed one right there. Let's see if it'll come back one more time. There we go. And he did fold it back in there. The other thing you want to do <clears throat> is as much as possible throw that your fly back upstream and allow it to be pulled both between the bank and the grass and along the grass down. A fish is going to use less energy. It's going to be able to accelerate <clears throat> on the fly easier. Doesn't mean that's always the key but it's definitely something to keep in mind and um, I think it works very well with big mature fish and especially the smallmouth in the summer they like to they like to accelerate down that current so again make that cast now the fly is starting to head down Oh, there was another one right there. I missed him. I even saw him. And so why my rod tip is staying with the line, the fly is still back behind it. And that allows you that nearest point of access to set strip or to strip set. That was good. It was right between the grass and the bank. That's what we're after. And the beauty, ooh, there was one right at the end. The beauty of doing this is you can cover a lot of water. I'm not missing much as I'm doing this. There's one chasing it. So I'm just kind of riding him out. Nope, did not pick it up. Now you may be able to see the grass that's setting right in front of me. If the clearer the water, you'd really be able to see it well. There we go. And so he came right out between the, that grass and the next patch of grass, that open hole right there. And I, with this, uh, trout collar, uh, the trout candy that's cream colored, you're, I'm able to see the fly. Easy, easy, easy. There we go.